and there, and there wasted his substance with riotous living. And he went and spent it all. There arose, excuse me, and when he had spent it all, there arose a mighty famine in the land, and he began to be want. And he went and joined himself to a citizen of that country, and he sent him into the fields to feed swine. And he would fain have filled his belly with the husk that the swine did eat. And no man gave unto him. And when he came to himself, he said, How many hired servants of my fathers have bread enough and to spare? And I perish with hunger. I will arise and go to my father, and I will say unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before thee, and I am no more worthy to be called thy son. Make me as one of thy hired servants. And he arose and came to his father. But when he was yet a great way off, his father saw him and had compassion and ran and fell on his neck and kissed him. And the son said unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and in thy sight, and I am no more worthy to be called thy son. But the father said to his servant, Bring forth the best robe and put it on him, and put a ring on his hand and shoes on his feet, and bring hither the fatted calf and kill it and let us eat and be merry. For this my son was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. And they began to be merry. And Lord, I have a blessing to the reading and the hearing of his word. Amen. And I'm going to take for a text today, God of a second chance. Say with me, God of a second chance. He is the God of a second chance. When we look at this account here, normally in the Bible it's labeled as the prodigal son. Now, prodigal means to be lavish, to be wasteful, to use resources. That's what that means. That's why it's called the prodigal son. Because in the story, we see that he took all of his inheritance and he went and wasted it. He went and lived a lavish life. He did all kind of who knows what with it. And he spent it all. Some of y'all in here know even today, how many of you, when you were in your younger days, it was Friday night and you just got paid. Come on. And you went out and you spent your whole paycheck. And you wasted it. Trying to please people. Trying to look important. Trying to be important. Trying to hang out because at that time in your life you thought that's what it was all about. And you wasted it. So you were a prodigal. Because that's what it meant. You were a person that lived lavishly. And you spent everything you had, you used all your resources and didn't think about tomorrow. Didn't think about what you would need the next day. Didn't think about you had to fill up your refrigerator. Didn't think about you needed gas. Didn't think about you need food. All you saw was it was Friday night and just got paid. Do y'all hear what I'm saying? All you saw was what you had in your hand. All you saw was that money, and money always look good when it's in your hand. And, and you know, it's amazing sometimes because, you know, it makes me think of how uh, we perish. The Bible says we perish for the lack of knowledge. And how many of you know, as you got older, you look back on your life and you think, the thing, the money I could have had if I had saved it. If I had known back then to save my money. If I had known back then to have a 401k plan. If I had known back then to have a savings account and instead of spending all my money, imagine how things could have been better if you knew now, if you knew then, excuse me, what you know now. Can I get an amen? But sometimes in life we only live for the moment. We only live for what we see and what's happening now. 
and our emotions are based on what's happening in the moment. And unfortunately, we let our emotions override our wisdom. We let our emotions override our common sense. We let our emotions override the way we think. This is why we got ourselves into the mistakes that we made in life, because we, get, we were too emotional. And we didn't stop and use wisdom and common sense and how to deal with that particular situation. So we allowed ourselves to be so emotional, walk around on our feelings, and we made decisions on our feelings. Decisions that later in life we regretted. We married people on our feelings. And then 10 years, 10 years in, you look at each other like, Married somebody else. I should have been with somebody else. All because of your emotions. As much as you love your children, there are some children that you probably wouldn't have had if it wasn't for your emotions and not your wisdom. But they're here now and you love them. And you raised them and you did what you had to do. But imagine if you hadn't been on your feelings, well, if you hadn't been on your emotions, and you used that mind and that wisdom mind that was speaking to you at the, at the time, but your emotions, my mind told me no, but my body. <laughs> based on the moment. And this young son, being in his father's house, having all provision, having everything laid out for him, decided, I want my inheritance now. So he goes to his father and says, give me my portion of my inheritance. Now, it wasn't something uncommon for a son to ask because that was the way it was. When parents would build a life, they were supposed to leave an inheritance for their children. That's just the way it was. For well, a father was supposed to take his time and build a life yes, yes. and build resources and income to take care of his future. And the future is our children. Yes. And that's what a good father does. And if you look back, it was also something that was kind of a command because if you go back to Deuteronomy chapter 20, verse 21 and verse 17, in, in Deuteronomy God commanded that the fathers in order to take care of their family should leave their sons an inheritance. Leave their children an inheritance. Now I know sometimes in this country, the way things happen, y'all know what I'm talking about, the way things happen we didn't have an inheritance we weren't able to build wealth, but others were. Y'all hear what I'm saying? You know, but we still know that most of the time, maybe we may not be able to leave riches, but sometimes we leave something to our children. Because that's what they fight over when you die. Your house, your car, your clothes, and whatever little money you got. They fight over insurance money. They get mad at one sibling because they feel like one sibling controlling all the situations. And the other siblings feel like they left out. Why, why you get to do it? Why I get? Because it is still in us to have that desire to inherit what our parents have. Because that is the natural order. And you'll find out when you really study the Bible, really God had designed it that way. He never designed for anyone to suffer to have to go through, to have to be in financial despair. It was not that way. It wasn't intended for it to be that way. We were supposed to receive an inheritance. And so it wasn't strange for a son to ask for his inheritance. Normally, the inheritance would pass to the son after the father died, but not necessarily. Sometimes when the sons were of age and they were ready to leave to start their own life, they could ask for their inheritance. Now you notice the father didn't have an issue because in the text it didn't say well the father said well son what's going on or, or, or it's not your time yet. When that younger son asked for his portion 
The father said, okay, and it said he divided amongst both of them. So apparently it was the time for their sons to receive their inheritance, and this is why the younger son asked for it. Y'all hear what I'm saying? So it's not like he just was being honorary and just came and took it, and he was being so, you know, disrespectful to his father. He said, give me my money that you're going to give me before you die or when you die. Sometimes we, we have always read the story like that, thinking that, well, man, that's kind of messed up. You know, the father ain't even dead yet. He asked for his fortune. Well, you don't have to die to leave your children an inheritance. Because at that time, when your children were ready to leave the house and start their own life, you gave them their portion. You all hear what I'm saying? That's the way it worked. So this son said, Father, give me my portion. Now, his portion was different than the first son. Because the first son was older. And the older son always got the larger part of the inheritance. Y'all hear what I'm saying? He would get a double portion of the father's estate. But all the sons down from there, he got a third of his father's estate. And he understood that. He didn't have a problem with the fact that he wasn't getting a double. He just wanted what was his. And all of us at some point in our life, we just want what's ours, right? We, we just want what's due to us. When you have worked and when you have served, when you work all for us, when you work 80 hours at your job, you come and expecting a paycheck. You expecting your portion because that's what's due, right? Whatever it is, whatever money is out there, whatever is due to you, you want it. You want to receive it. So he asks for his portion. But here lies the problem. Instead of taking his portion and going and building his life, he decided to become prodigal. He decided, I want to take my portion and live the good life. Because here's a problem that we have with our money, because when the money is a lot and it's in our face, it seems as though we got enough. But we don't realize that sometimes nickel and diamond yourself will cause you to be broke. You think just because you're not spending big bucks that you are right. But when you're spending 10 here and 20 there and 30 there, you can, what's called, nickel and dime yourself broke. Because when you think you're spending a little money, because it, it's just something about it in your head, when you got $1,000, it seems like a lot. And then you start nickel and diming yourself and start spending here and spending there. And then you... In your mind, you think you have enough because you didn't actually count the cost. You just spend it without calculating. That's why we were taught when we were younger, you're supposed to balance your checkbook. That means whatever you spend, you write it down and then you look at what's left. So you know what you got to work with. But the problem is we don't balance. And we don't balance because what? We are our feelings. We let our, our feelings and our body control how we spend our money. You out somewhere making it rain. <laughs> but you didn't realize it was going to be a rainy day. I mean, let's be real. We live in a time that why sugarcoat stuff. Let's be real. That's just, that's just the way life is, right? We understand this. So we become a product. Because we want to live lavishly. We want to live on our feelings. We want to live in the now. And we don't think about the future. Amen. Now as the story goes on, the son did not think about his future. He didn't think about that one day he would be married and have sons of his own. And this is what the sin was. This is why he felt bad because he knew he should have done better with his inheritance. This is why he said, you know what, when he came to himself and realized he was broke, busted, and disgusted, he said he realized that he had sinned against his father and he had sinned against God. Because he knew that that was the way things were supposed to be. He received his inheritance so that he could go and start his life and do God's will and raise a family and build a business and build a life for himself and his family and his wife. So that in one day when his sons were of age, he could pass on an inheritance to his sons. But yet he went out and he partied and he lived lavishly.
And you know, it's funny how when friends are around, we let our friends influence how we act as well. We let our friends and our peer, what they call peer pressure, influence how we handle life and how we handle ourselves and how we spend our money. Because isn't it amazing how when you go out somewhere with friends, it seems like they more broke than you are for some reason. <laughs> and because they know you the one that got the money, they all want to hang with you that night. Tell the story. And not only do you spend money on yourself, but you find your sp money spending money on time spending money on them. Because they know you got it. Because that's what people do when they when people will take advantage of you when they know you have something. And when they and see when, and then they catch you in the right mood. Because see, they ain't gonna they ain't gonna come to you when they when you know you gotta spend money to pay bills and pay this. But they'll wait right till Friday night when you know it's hangout time, then that's when they wanna come. Then y'all hear what I'm saying. I'm trying to show you the story, but I'm trying to show you life. I'm trying to show you how it is in life and how this story relates to how we are in life yeah. and in modern times. Because the Bible said there is nothing new under the sun. It's not like this story don't apply today. Do you hear what I'm saying? So he went and he wasted it. He spent his money, he lived lavishly until it was all gone. And then right when his money was all gone, then everything fell apart. Because the Bible says then there was a famine in the land. Isn't it funny how sometimes things can come at the wrong time? It seems like just when you done paid all your bills, then the car break down. Just when you done got everything stored up that just done went grocery shopping and you done, you done balanced out and budgeted your whole little check, then something want to come up. Pipe burst, tire flat, this happens. Car want to shut off. Alternator decide to go out. And now he done spent all his money, then all of a sudden a famine came in the land. Because he was caught unaware, because instead of him doing what he was supposed to do with his inheritance, if he had used his inheritance wisely, he would have been prepared for the famine. And I'm going to tell you, if you don't learn how to be wise, and, and we were even taught this in our day, when they say save your money for a rainy day, that's what that meant. Because rain could come any time. Rain can come when you least expect it. Troubles come when you least expect it. So you have to learn how to have something set aside for a rainy day. Now I know sometimes that's the challenge of life because sometimes it's not always easy to do that. You all hear what I'm saying? It's not only sometimes, especially in the days and times we are living in, it seems like no matter how much you make, it's not enough. Because prices keep going up and they keep going up. And it's not like the old days where they would go up gradually over a five or ten year period. Prices are going up daily. I mean, last week it was this much, now next week is this much. Or in fact, you can go somewhere at Walmart today and, and chicken might cost this much and then you go tomorrow and it, it's done change. And so, we live in a time where it's hard to balance our inheritance. It's hard to balance what we have. But what I want you to get and understand is, when he lost everything, he realized that he had a father. Because he didn't take all of his father's money. The father would only give the sons their portion. Y'all hear what I'm saying? So his father still had enough. And as I said to you when I first got up here, our father is rich. Woo! See, I want you to understand, we don't just, when the Bible tells you these things, it's not just always metaphorical. It's not just saying that just to say it. God actually has substance. He actually has things. This is why the writer says, according to his riches and glory. And the world is a replica of heaven. The way he created this world, the way he gave it to us to govern this world here, is a replica of heaven. In heaven, there is substance. So when God created man, he gave us substance. Yes. 
Do you hear what I'm saying? So we can't always think that when they say these things in Scripture, they're always just metaphorical. God actually is rich. God actually has things. The streets are paved with gold. It talks about how there are different emeralds and diamonds and different stones that are in heaven. Where God is. God actually has substance. Why? Because God is a king. And a king has substance. You ain't never seen a broke king. You ain't never seen a broke king. Kings are not broke. Do you hear what I'm saying? God is a king. And he has riches that are in heaven. And he wants to pour you out some of those riches. But you got to learn how to turn to him. You got to learn how to turn to your father. When you get to a point where you're desolate, when you're broke, busted, and disgusted, learn how to go back to your father. Because we try to figure stuff out on our own. We try to balance it on our own. We try to do it on our own. He was trying to do everything on his own to the point where he was broke. He said, I'll go work for a citizen and I'll work with the pigs and I'll feed the pigs. And if you read the story, it got to the point where he was so hungry because you know what? When, when, when people see you as homeless, when they see you and need you or treat you in your kind of way, so the man was trying to get free labor. You got to read between the lines of the story because it said and they gave him nothing. They let him go out there and work with the pigs. And it was actually insulting because you all know as a Jew, the swine was considered to be unclean. Oh, y'all ain't hear what I'm saying here today. So he put them, instead of putting them with other animals or sheep, they put him out there with the pigs. Because when you don't have nothing, people will treat you a certain way. When people look at you, they'll look down on you when you don't, they think you don't have nothing, they'll treat you bad. Because you don't want to go back to where you came. You don't want to go back where there's security. You don't want to go back to where you know life can be better. But because you're out there trying to do it on your own, you're going from peddler to post and you're going from this person to that person because you don't want to recognize that it's time for you to go back home. It's time for you to go back to God. So you think this person is going to help you. You think you can do it better, but they'll treat you bad. So they put him out there in the pig pen. And then wouldn't give him nothing to the point where he thought about eating the slop that the pigs eat. Because when you're hungry and desperate, you'll eat whatever you can. This is why I don't understand. Let me veer off for a minute. This is why I don't understand why some of our children are so spoiled. Because they only want to eat certain things. They don't want to eat that type of food that we grew up with. And then they frown, but you let them get hungry enough. Yeah. You know why? Because they've never experienced hunger. They've never experienced being raised in a household where you had 18 kids and no money, and you had to spread the best way you could. Yes. And they were happy to get whatever they could. Thank you, Lord. <clears throat> now, I ain't gonna lie, I don't care, I don't like black eyed peas. I... <laughs> I'm just saying. I can't do that. I eat everything else. I eat some other stuff I don't like if I'm hungry, but I ain't doing that. <laughs> anyway, back to the subject. But they don't recognize because they're used to everything handed to them. They don't know what it takes. They don't know what the parents go through to keep things on. They don't know the luxury that they're living in because when you are in your father's house, when you're in your parents' house, you don't realize how the switch works. You don't realize somebody got to pay a bill for that light to come on. You don't realize somebody got to pay a bill for the heat to come on. You don't realize somebody had to pay a bill for the air to be on and for the car to drive you somewhere. All you see is the substance that you have. And he didn't understand when he left his father's house instead of just asking for his portion. He should have also asked his father for wisdom. He should have asked his father for wisdom on how to spend his portion. But daddy, how did you do it? How did you build up all this stuff? I want to go off on my own, but how did you build all this stuff? If he had to ask 
And if he hadn't been listening to his father and watching his father, his father first would have said, don't go spend your money on women. Don't go spend your money on friends. Don't go live in lavishly. Don't go be a prodigal. If he would have asked for wisdom. And imagine if some of us would have asked our parents for a little wisdom. Or if they gave us the wisdom, imagine if we would have listened to that wisdom. But you know why you didn't hear it? Because your mind was telling you no, but your body! You were on your feelings! And you don't want to receive the wisdom that was given to you. I'm trying to work. I'm trying to work. Now, I don't know how this is going to go because it seems like this is just more of a, a teaching info. It's not, maybe, may, may not necessarily right now be a shout message, but this is what God has given me to give to the people. That you got to realize the state of your life. And you have made mistakes. But God is saying, okay, you can't go back and change it. He can't go back and get his inheritance back. But he still has a father that is rich. Yeah. 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 Now understand, there's a practical side and a spiritual side to this story. The spiritual side, Jesus was trying to get them to understand salvation. He was trying to get you to understand that just like you do your money, this is how you do your life. Because... Mama told you to go to church. Mama told you to believe in God. Mama and daddy told you how to live a righteous life, but you went out and you became a spiritual prodigal. Yes, yes. And you lived in the old kind of way and you didn't keep the commandments that your grandmother taught you. You didn't keep the commandments that your mother and your father taught you on how to carry yourself and how to live and how to be right. So you went out and allowed yourself to be prostituted out. You went out and allowed yourself to be used by men. Now, I ain't talking about just a gender. You can be used, male or female. You can be used by people. Because you own your feelings. Because you were ready to get out there in life. But you did not keep the commandments. You didn't take God along with you. You didn't take wisdom along with you. You didn't take the spirit along with you. And so now we have things that we regret doing now. We have lived our life, we have wasted time, because time is just like money. There are two things that can be wasted that you cannot get back. And we wasted time in life, we wasted time, we wasted time, and then it's not till we've lost it all that we realize and we come to ourselves and say, you know what, I got a father that's rich. I'm tired of living the life that I'm living. I'm tired of living in the sin that I'm living in. I'm tired of the lifestyle that I have. I'm tired of being used and abused by people. I'm tired of people taking advantage of me. I'm tired of looking at the same situation every day. I'm tired of spinning my wheels and not getting anywhere. I'm tired of people looking at me and treating me like I'm nothing. But you know what? I think there is a God that's in heaven. There's a God that is rich. There's a God that is merciful. And he's our heavenly father. And he said if I would confess my sins. If I would come back to him. I can turn my life around. Because I have a father that is rich. I got a father that is able to provide. I got a father that is able to change any situation. I got a father that can turn things around. Anybody ever need a God to turn things around? Why? Because he's able. He's able to turn it around. He has power. He has love. And he can give you a sound mind.
until you learn how to humble yourself. Until you learn how you got to get to a point where it's time to come back home. And he realized that it was a time to come back to his father. Yes. <clears throat> and he said, I'll just be a slave or I'll be a servant because at least I'll live well. At least I'll have something to eat. Come on. Yes. At least I'll be all right yes. if I can only get back yes. to my father's house. Yes. But here's the way God is. Because just when you think God is going to cast you out, just when you think you have humbled yourself and you felt like I'd rather be nothing and be with God, this is what happened. He said, I will arise and go to my father and I will say unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before God. And I am no more worthy to be called your my son. Make me as one of your servants. And he arose and he came to his father's house. But when he was yet a great way off, his father saw him and had compassion. The son didn't even have to make it all the way to the door. He was still way off in the field. And his father saw him afar off. And the father, instead of the son running to the father, the father ran to the son. And fell on his knee And kissed him. And the son said unto the father, I have against thee. <clears throat> In thy sight, and I am no more worthy to be called son. But the father said to his servant, his servants, bring forth the best robe and put it on. Put the ring on his hand and shoes on his feet. You know why? Because God is not like man. Sin, I'm going to admit 
that I'm wrong. And God wants you to admit when you're wrong. And he, wanted, he said, I will tell my Father in heaven. I'm going to let him know that I sinned against heaven. And he rehearsed and said, I'll be a slave. I'll be a servant in my Father's house. But God. I'm so glad God is not like that. God is ready to receive you. He's ready to receive you. He's ready to receive you. Hallelujah. So I'm asking you today, I want you to think about your life. Whether you have backslidden or whether you are not saved and you've made mistakes in life. I want you to know that he's God of a second chance. Sometimes you feel like it's over. Sometimes you feel like you can't come back. Sometimes you feel like that you cannot be restored. But I'm here to tell you that God is the God of a second chance. Is there anybody out there who is unsaved or you are saved and you just want to become closer to God? You realize that you strayed and, when you, and you want to come back to God. You can come to him now. I want you to listen to them as they sing, as you make up your mind.
somebody receive this word today. I hope this made somebody think. Give us a mind to serve you, uh, give us a mind to be 